always been told companies start for one or two reasons. Either somebody has an idea or someone's given an opportunity. And ours was definitely an opportunity. Um, the company that Mark and I and Paula was involved on um, very suddenly went out of business. And um, we were encouraged by some customers with much help from them to start our own. Um, and so we started literally by somebody wanting us to be in business and ready to help us be in business. They were pretty humble beginnings when we started out. I mean, I don't think people today at Bayshore would have any idea how the company has changed from its uh, beginnings in the first place. We started very modestly with, I think we started five or six people um, to get started. Um, so it was Kurt Anderson, me, Herb uh, was the, as the owner, and he had a secretary in the office. Uh, we all wore a, a number of hats. Herb was basically, he ran the company, he was our sales guy, he was the designer and engineer and draftsman. Uh, Mark was our, <coughs> one of our head fabricator welders out in the shop, and I was more or less the, the jack of all trades. When you're a uh, four-man company, a four-person company, you're just trying to make do with what you can and you just got to react and do things, do the jobs that come in. The uh, original building, uh, Bayshore Systems, where we originated, uh, was an old uh, oh, military uh, structure, uh, like a warehouse, a big uh, cor corrugated uh, metal siding, no insulation, just metal siding going up the walls. I always thought it was a pre-World War II building, but I'm told it was a pre-World War I building. It was a classic, decrepit, metal building with broken windows, a really crappy floor, dark and dingy. Rows of windows across the top uh, for light access and stuff, or light to get into the building. Um, and probably about 20% of those windows were broken out. <laughs> Glad it was in California. It was, doesn't get down to uh, below 30 degrees very often. There, there was a small office originally, um, but we expanded and we had two container vans stacked on top of one another. And we poked a hole through um, and put a spiral staircase in, and that was Herb's office up there. So he would just zoom up and zoom down all the time. And the inside of the building, uh, pretty rough looking. Um, the uh, floors were all uneven, you know, layers of dirt, grit, you know, grease on the floor of stuff. It wasn't slippery or anything, it was just so compacted and stuff. It was, uh, you know, just not a great floor like we have here at Bayshore today. Um, you know, very dirty shop. Part was concrete floor, part was broken concrete, part was dirt. Um, you had to walk a really long way through a dirty shop to the ladies' restroom. It was the first time we made a 100,000 foot-pound machine and it was on a huge excavator, bigger than anything you've seen here. And when we brought that in one time, literally the tracks made grooves in the floor all the way into the shop. It was heartbreaking that we just, it was a lousy floor, but then we wrecked it. <laughs> so, it was a little disheartening. But it was home, um, this, this is what we had. When we started here, I felt like we had moved into the Ritz. <laughs> I marveled each time I go up to visit Bayshore in Idaho, how much the, uh, the company, uh, the facility, the size of the company has changed from the, the humble beginnings back in the, the late 70s. I would have never dreamed uh, that you know, that we were going to be an international company. I just, you know, a lot of shops are, you know, especially, you know, especially uh, family-owned uh, shops. They're in and out of business, uh, last a few years, and they're done. And, you know, um, Herb just kept on uh, designing stuff and making stuff. And then the low drill uh, kind of came into our, uh, came into existence for Bayshore. And, uh, once I saw that, you know, we saw the, uh, I saw the uh, possibilities with that, that this could be big, and uh, we're, st we're still making them today. The, the low drill evolved, and all of the California contractors had to have one of our machines. So that caught on, and I think that was part of 
the momentum that maybe got us going? You know, when I look back, I think the low drill was a disruptor in the industry. Um, and I don't give myself, again, any credit uh, for looking at the market and saying, this is the machine that's needed right now. No, I needed a machine, and that was a machine. And so that's why I pursued it. Did I have any idea that Loma Prieta would change the foundation drilling industry in California where all of a sudden to do the retrofit work after that earthquake you needed a low clearance long reach drilling machine to do it. It luck. It was it was absolutely dumb luck that we had that when we had it uh, and it was the perfect machine. Personally my biggest innovation uh, was probably or contribution was helping uh, to basically develop the interface panel for the low drill, uh, which obviously later on became the product line for Bayshore. I always say that I recognized a good idea when I saw it. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and it was just, again, it was some stars aligning that Rich Howell had invented this drill and patented it, uh, and then kind of didn't know what to do with it. Uh, but he thought, everybody says, this is a good idea, you should pursue building these. And I'm up in Northern California, he was in LA, and I'm in Northern California looking for a drill room. Really looking for something that would take Bayshore into mainstream drilling. Um, and so those were the requirements. We finally had some money in the bank mm -hmm. um, and said, wow, wouldn't it be great to have our own facility? Mm -hmm. um, and. Herb's brother, Rich, was working with us at the time, and he was really interested in moving out of California. So he did a, a little look around and um, came through this region and said, we really didn't stop in the Coeur d'Alene area, but I think you should. So um, that's kind of how we, we knew we didn't want to stay in California. We knew we wanted to go somewhere else. He had a lot of people telling him it was a bad move, uh, that you know, tell them all this stuff, you know, how are you going to get transportation in and out of there and where are you going to get all your supplies and, you know, because the Bay Area, obviously, they have 15 steel mills and, you know, places, so many places and options to get stuff from and people were telling me, and customers, you don't, Idaho doesn't have a lot of customers there and, and Herb's like, we don't sell a whole lot of you know, stuff to uh, people that are local around here. We were drawn back to Rathdrum. We, this little grassland area was all bluegrass farmers and the gentleman, um, I think, saw the writing on the wall of way before a lot of developers did. Um, and so he turned this into an industrial park. The very first day we got here, um, with four cats and a dog and a 15-year-old, <laughs> um, we were so tired and the luggage rack, Herb shut the back of my blazer car and the luggage rack straps just swung and just blew the window right off the back end. So that was our very first experience, the very first couple of minutes that we were here. We lived here in the shop um, for like three months before um, a shop in Athol um, and an apartment got built. Um, and then the following year we built our home adjacent to that, but that was our, our transition area. For me personally, what the, you know, my anniversary with the company being the same as the you know, company's anniversary, 40th anniversary, is realize, <laughs> realizing that I'm a part of the roots of this company. It's really, really special to me, um, knowing that I had the opportunity uh, to be a part of the company from the beginning. Well, I feel blessed for sure and very grateful for everybody here that helps this company be what it is today because we can't do it by ourselves. And, um, I just get a very warm and fuzzy feeling even when I'm driving down Highway 41 and look over and say, my goodness, you know, 
we've created that and it's still continuing to go on and I also when Herb and I travel it's really fun to be driving down a freeway and say wow there's a low drill or um, when I see one leave this shop that is just an awesome feeling to me to know that that is going you know to a, a customer of ours and hopefully we'll do a good job for that that company. Well, I'm very proud to have been a part of that uh, and it's it's a good time I think to to honor Herb and uh, in the vision he had to to really grow the business and and take a lot of risks along the way uh, in many ways I think he is responsible for laying the foundation for the success they're uh, experiencing today and I'm very proud to have been a part of it. Would have felt good. <laughs> uh, it's just really gratifying to have started very humbly um, in our little business and to um, have a business that's thriving that will probably outlive me. Um, that's affected so many people positively. It's given people good careers. Um, you know, as I've said many times, and I think we accomplished this, is that I, I, I would like nothing more than when an employee, either at the end of their career or the end of their time at Bayshore, but definitely from the end of their career, uh, looks back and, and when they think of Bayshore saying, you know, I have no regrets on working at Bayshore and if I had it to do again, I would go back and work for them again because I loved working there. Um, if, if that happens, I, I've succeeded in spades.